students, I hope you're having a great day today. My name is Torres and I want to take a moment to thank you for joining me for a little Psych 101. This video is part one of the Research Methods video series. In this video, we will learn about some research basics and important vocabulary used in psychological research. This video has two overarching ideas. First, psychologists follow the scientific process. Second, Scientific research is empirical. It is grounded in objective, tangible evidence that can be observed time and time again, regardless of who is observing. The topic of this video will focus on the vocabulary on this slide. You can find this information in the Google Slide presentation and in the Psych 101 Key Vocab Google Doc. Both of these files are linked in the description box below. All scientists want to understand the world around them. Psychologists are no different. In their work, psychologists focus their attention on understanding behavior as well as the cognitive and psychological processes that underlie that behavior. In contrast to other methods that people use to understand the behavior of others, such as intuition and personal experience, scientific research demands that there is evidence to support any claims made. Scientific knowledge is empirical, meaning that it is grounded in objective, tangible evidence that can be observed time and time again, regardless of who is observing that behavior. There are two types of reasoning that can be used in research, inductive and deductive reasoning. So what's the difference between inductive and deductive? Well, broadly speaking, the difference involves whether the reasoning moves from the general to the specific or from specific to the general. Inductive is used to describe reasoning that involves specific observations, such as observed patterns, to make a general conclusion. Deductive reasoning involves starting from a set of general premises and then drawing a specific conclusion that contains no more information than that premise themselves. The scientific method can be described as deductive because first you formulate a hypothesis, an educated guess based on a general premise. Then you test that hypothesis with an experiment. Based on the results of the experiment, you can make a specific conclusion to the accuracy of your hypothesis. Typically, any conclusions made from scientific research will lead to new theories and hypotheses in order to form more established, broader generalizations. When a psychologist collects data, they will collect variable information for a certain amount of individuals in the study. Each individual, participant, animal, unit, artifact, whatever is being measured within a study is called a case. A variable is a characteristic of interest that can be measured within a sample and it is presumed to be able to vary. In situations where the variable measurement does not change from one case to another, that is called a constant. Every time a variable is measured for a case, that measurement or that piece of data is called an observation. So let's look at this example. In this situation, you can see that there are eight students, right? This is the unit. So there are eight cases. Cases are usually in the rows of a data set. Six attributes, which were situated in the columns, were measured for each one of the eight cases. These attributes were gender, grade, teacher, test one, test two, and test three. There are five variables and there is one constant. Grade is a constant because all the students are in third grade. However, they may be different genders, they may have different teachers, and they will have different reading scores in test one, two, and three. Notice that gender is not marked as F or M, rather it is marked by zero and one. So zero and one were used as codes. Zero would signify male, and one would signify female. With eight cases, five variables, and one constant, that would mean that there are 48 observations in this grid. In some experiments, the goal of the researcher may be 
to establish a cause to an effect. To achieve this, the researcher must pay attention to two types of important variables, the independent variable and the dependent variable. An independent variable is the variable that can be manipulated or controlled in the study. The amount of manipulation is sometimes taken into account. Depending on the complexity of a study, there may be more than one independent variable. The dependent variable is not controlled or manipulated in any way. They are only measured and registered. These measurements can vary in relation to the independent variable. While the results can be predicted, the data is always measured. In a good experiment, the dependent variable is carefully isolated to establish a cause and effect. To summarize, the independent variable is intentionally manipulated, it's controlled, and you can vary the independent variable to whatever rate you choose. The dependent variable is intentionally left alone. That is what is being measured, and it varies at an unknown rate. In today's video, we learned psychologists follow the scientific process. Scientific research is empirical. It is grounded in objective, tangible evidence that can be observed time and time again, regardless of who is observing. For reflection, please take a few minutes to consider the following open-ended question. Why are commonly used terms, in other words, vocabulary, so important when conducting research? I'd love to get your thoughts in the comments below. So that's it for this lecture. In the next lecture, we will discuss observational studies and how they're used in the study of psychology. Before you go, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Stats with Taurus for more Psych 101. Looking forward to it. Ciao!